and welcome to this episode of What a Horse. We got a, quite a bit of information for you today and we're going to get right to it. But first, before we do anything, we're going to take a short commercial pause for our sponsors. And as soon as that's over, we'll be right back. So I'll see you in just a moment. <laughs> It's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. Come one, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or buy the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee. You will be satisfied as well. Watch your horses come running when you break out the Feed for All horse feed. Give Feed for All a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 Highway 64 East in Shelbyville, Tennessee and pick up a load of feed today. Joe is ready to load it for you. Uh, feed for All, so good. Let's return back to Jerry Harris and his guests on What a Horse. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people have been asking me about where the What a Horse show can be seen this year. As a lot of you know, we have stopped all subscriptions to our website. It is free from here on out. In addition to that, in the 2022 show season, you'll be able to view the What a Horse show on YouTube TV. They just surpassed Hulu with 4 million strong subscribers, so I'm very excited about that. All you got to do is turn on your TV set, go to Roku, look up your YouTube channel, What a Horse will be on there. Also, we'll be on the STGN 49 Extreme Sports Network. That's another outlet for the What a Horse program. In addition, people will be able to go to our what a Horse TV video group Facebook page, which we will be streaming some different coat previews and horse shows through that page. The What a Horse Facebook page, the Jerry Harris Facebook page, the regular YouTube page, it's still up there. You can still go there and view the What a Horse program and all of our different videos. In addition to that, Charter Spectrum will be airing the What a Horse program in Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia 
That's 2.2 million different subscribers that have access to the Water Horse Show. So this year, we're just looking at promoting the Tennessee walking horse and putting him out there in front of everybody we can. I do want to bring up one thing. Saturday, February the 5th, Sugar Creek, recently purchased by David Williams, the, which was Rising Star Ranch, it's now known as Sugar Creek, will have the first look in coat preview, and this promises to be outstanding. They have some fantastic studs there, but this Saturday, it makes no difference who your coat is by. Bring him on, bring him out. Starts at 10 o'clock. That's at the old Rising Star, the new Sugar Creek. David Williams opening the door for everybody to come. And Rowdy Ranch will be serving the food, which that's always a big draw. Everybody loves Rowdy Ranch. Bud Fox and Curl Misseldine are the first ones to take advantage of the free advertising for different events, shows, sales, whatever. We're going to advertise all of them free of charge. Bud is going to have a show at, uh, in Decatur, Alabama. It's called the Southern Championship. That will be uh, the 8th and the 9th. Now, that's in Decatur. That's at the Rack and Horse Pavilion. That promises to be good, and that's the Southern Championship, which used to be held in Perry, Georgia. Carol Misseldine will have two shows here this year. The first one will be the Spring Extravaganza, and it will be at the Ag Center. One corp here, limited ringside parking. She said she's going to sell 50 spots. That's it. Last year, there was far more than that. She's cutting down to where people are not crowded. First come, first serve. So if you're wanting to get a parking spot at the Ag Center for that show, I suggest you call her today because it's going to get packed quick. Anybody's gone to one of Carol's shows, they know that she puts on one heck of a show, her and Denny Russell both. So we're always, we're all looking forward to that. Another thing is people talk about purchasing horses, and a lot of people are purchasing this time of year. We're going to show a sh short clip of a foal that's Oh, maybe a week old, I think. And the way he moves, and we're going to talk about what to look for when you're out purchasing that first horse or your first foal or whatever. You're going to buy a wingling, you're going to buy a yearling. Here's what you look for. Here's a little short clip. If you watch this foal as he moves, that head is shaking. His back feet, he is stretching. He's got a good stride back there, but he's hitting on his heel. He's not hitting on his toe. That's something to watch very closely. The way these horses move, the way they reach with their front end. All of this is important when you're looking for that first offspring to purchase, especially out of a pasture. A lot of yearlings are purchased out of the pasture. Now this one is just a winglet. He's got a ways to go. However, this particular foal will be at Rising Star, or Sugar Creek, I'm sorry, this weekend for the coat preview. He was foaled there. He's by, armed and by arms deal for real out of an armed and dangerous mare. That's Ruby's arm. But as you watch this coat move, his back end, he's got a good stride. He's hitting on his heels, and he's got that head shake. These are things that you want to look for any time that you're purchasing that first horse, especially if you're going to show. It's a good thing to look for if you're going to go on a trail ride, too. You want one with a smooth get gait that will not jar you to death. Tennessee walking horse is the way to go. I've got a lady right now looking for one. Her priorities, she wants one 9 to 11 years old. She wants to be able to go trail riding in the day. If she decides she wants to go to a horse show that night, she can go to the horse show. Tennessee walking horse is the way to go. Now, judging. You've seen what a foal looks like with his natural gait. Now we're going to look at an animation. This is something that this year when you're at the horse show, you want to judge a horse show, watch what the horses are doing and see how they match up with this animated video.
In describing the gates of the performance horse in the show horse division, these gates will apply to all classes in this division, regardless of age or sex. The flat walk should be true, bold, and four-cornered. The horse should nod the head with every stride and bring each forefoot to the ground a mere second before the diagonally opposite hind foot touches the ground. The number one factor that separates the walking horse from all other breeds is their head motion. If a horse is not shaking his head, he is not walking. The foreleg should move straight, not crossing or winging with his hooves, breaking at the knees, and reaching forward in an elevated arc. The rear leg should follow through close to the ground, comfortable and overstriding the front tracks. They should be stretching, not squatting or cramping, with a lot of bend in their hocks. Notice the horse's back hoof up even with his front hoof. Stiff front or rear leg motion, stumbling, bucking knees, lack of rhythmic timing, pointing or favoring a particular leg, necessity for excessive pumping or bumping of the horse are not typical of the walking horse, and the judge must immediately excuse any horse exhibiting this type of motion from the ring. The running walk should be the same general motion as the flat walk, but with additional speed. The horse shall exhibit a smooth, gliding, overstepping, four-cornered gait with greater stride and accelerated head motion. The running walk should be a free and easy gait. Horses exhibiting an exaggerated, hesitating way of going with a tendency to point with the front feet are not in form. Twisting of the hocks or stiff-legged rear leg motion shall also be considered a deviation from the true running walk, and a horse exhibiting these ways of going should be penalized. The canter should be smooth and straight on both leads, not walking behind, but cantering on both ends with a rolling, rocking chair motion comfortably in hand. Notice the horse leading with his left front leg going to the left and leading with his right front leg going to the right. Exaggerated pumping of the horse at the canter is not considered good form. The walking horse should move freely in each gait and proceed in a smooth, fluid, rhythmic manner. At all gates, the horse should be flexed at the pole with muzzle slightly tucked. Any tendency to rack, pace, or other deviation from the true walk are not typical of the breed. The preceding mannerisms are not considered good form and shall be penalized in judging. All entries should be presented clean, neatly trimmed, braided, and in good flesh, presenting a healthy appearance. Each entry should be outfitted in clean and appropriate tack. The exhibitor of each entry should be neat in appearance, attired in properly fitting riding habits, and shall conduct themselves in a sportsmanlike manner at all times. A horse that has not performed all the required gates shall not be placed over a horse that has performed all gates. That's something that everybody needs to think about when they're going to a horse show. If you notice even the animated horse, he was hitting on his heels when he reaches He's reaching out front, his back legs, he's hitting on his heel, striding forward. These are things that during the year when you're watching the horse shows, look at those things. See which one of the horses is living up to exactly what the gait is that's required by our Tennessee walking horse. As time goes on, you'll find out that you can judge just as good a lot of times as other people that are already licensed judges. You may even want to think about becoming a judge yourself. Now, every week we've been going down to Lane Leverett's and interviewing different people. I know I'd talked to several of them about having a horse show in Summertown, Tennessee. We're not going to be able to do that. They, uh, even though Mike Floyd was willing to work on the track and help get it ready and everything, some of the members decided they didn't want to have a horse show there anymore, so they bailed out. However, Bobby Ballou is a diehard Tennessee walking horse fan him and all of his friends. So in Lower Lawrenceburg, there's a place called St. Joseph's that they have a outstanding arena from what I've heard. So we're gonna be talking to them and seeing about having a horse show there. In addition to that, we have some other people that are bringing up new shows to be held in Shelbyville and other areas. So that's one thing to look at. Right now, we're gonna go back to Lane Leverage for an interview with Bobby Blue and friends. Here we go. We're at Lane Leverett's again watching Colts. With me today, I have Mr. Bobby Blue and Don Mason. 
Now, Don hadn't been on here before, but we kind of conned him into coming in because we're going to talk about having new horse shows or bringing back old horse shows, but we're going to talk about this man right here, and he just sold his horse. That's a good deal. Yeah, that was great. That was uh, He was an outstanding colt, an uh, honors colt, and uh, he uh, he was one of them plum goodies, Jerry. I mean, you know. Well, that's what, that's what Lane said, but see, when you talk to Lane Leverett, He's always got the man. Well, in, in this case, he may have. Yeah, but see, now y'all just sold the man. Well, and that's all, that's what we're here for. I right. mean, that's that's the name of the game. What we're trying to do. Right. But next week, Lane's going to have another out here that's the man. He'll have a main man. Yeah, yeah, he'll have the main man next week, and after that one's gone, he'll find money done. That's right. Yeah, he'll find yeah. another. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's all barn. about. Yeah. Buying yeah. Barn He's, full of good ones. Yeah. Well, I, I believe Joe Barnes bought this one, right? That's correct. Uh, that's correct. Mr. Joe Barnes uh, bought it, and I believe he went over to Link Webb's stable. So uh, uh, it was, he was, this honors coach, I've, I've had three or four of them last year and, and had good luck with them. I mean, they've been some dandy colts. And, uh, of course, you know, the credit goes to Lane and his crew. You know, he can uh, – He's got a hard-working crew out here. He he's really does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But, but now uh, I'm going to tell you, Joe Barnes, when he goes looking, he don't come back with no cull. He finds him a good one, and he sticks with him. He, now, he, he does. Now, he, yeah. he yeah. finds some good ones. He's bought some good ones in the past and still got some good ones. Well, that's, you know, it, it don't cost any more to feed a plum good than it does a one that's not so cost good. Cost the same amount to train them. Same amount, that's right. That there is going to charge us the same amount to pull a cog in. That's, that's right. It. So you might as well have a good one as a bad one. Well, we talked, I don't know, a month ago. We were over here, and and, and to me, that's one of the fun things that we've been doing is, is trying to find these colts uh, and get them with a good trainer uh, and then turn them over and let somebody else enjoy the showing and uh, uh, that's, that's just a lot of fun to me to see them come in just a raw animal and, and, and see them start developing and learning and, and getting stronger. I enjoy that as much as anything. And like I said before, the first thing is a lot of the people that we've met got to be friends. And uh, But it, it's fun to find these young folks and, and watch them come on. Well, it, it is. It, I like to watch them out. I, we was talking. Buddy Moore. And I, I thought the world buddy more, yeah. but you remember when Kilgore had his purchasing group at Sand Creek and they was all, this story was told to me, it said they were sitting there and they was bidding on this coat and somebody kept up in the price, up in the price. And they finally realized that it was Buddy, but Buddy was a member of the purchasing group. And they went over and said, Buddy, we're betting on this horse. Why are you, buddy? He said, I own all this and myself. <laughs> and I, don't want, I don't want y'all to have none of him. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's really the way it is. We, we look at them, and I've had some that has made money, and I've had some as well. Yeah. And I'm sure you have too, ain't no, you? No, yes, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a gamble to start with, but then a you little know, coat like he just sold, you can almost tell he's. If something happens, he's going to be a great one. Yeah, it's kind of like that three-card po three poker. It, it, when you go to 40 to 1 odds, yeah. and, and you, you lose all these hands, and all of a sudden you hit that one hand, it makes up for all those you lost. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very, there it comes close. Yeah, like that. Right. It's like the old saying, you win a few, you lose a few, and a few, you get rained out. That's it. <laughs> it's been getting hope for better days tomorrow. Yes, sir. Well, there's one other thing we was talking about. We're trying to get old shows back in. I know that lit a fire under you. It did. Uh, when I saw you and Lane talking about some of these old shows, uh, I immediately went to the phone and called one of my old buddies, Greg Johnston. I said, Greg, you, you may want to take me to the doctor, but let's put the horse show back on. Mm -hmm. So uh, he said, all right, if you want to, we'll try it. So. Uh, yeah, we, we got in mind of trying it. Uh, we run into a little roadblock or two, but uh, like I said, we got two strikes on us, but we ain't out yet. Hey, it takes three to make you hit the bench again. That's exactly right. So uh, we're we're in we're still in negotiations and wanting to. I mean, we want to bad. Well, I believe every, everybody would love to see, especially a show up around Lawrenceburg, because yep. there, there's some good shows up there. Yep. I'd love to see one come back to Mount Pleasant. But now you brought up the name of a place 
that's down closer to the Alabama border. Right. St. John's. Saint, no, St. Joseph's. St. Joseph. We call it, everybody calls it St. Joe. It's down on the state line. But they've got an outstanding arena. Uh, Greg Johnston said they had a racking horse show down there, walking horse, a, a racking horse show last fall and said it's, it's, for, it's first class. Uh, it's been a while since I've been down there to look at it. So my memory is not as fresh as what I want it to be. But uh, if Greg says it's good, that's good enough for me. Well, we're still going to shoot for the same date. Well, we're, that's what we're working on. June, that's a good date. June the 11th, there's, uh, as far as I know, the only show around is in Crossville. Right. And uh, the consensus is most of the trainers would probably be looking for something closer to Middle Tennessee. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that we can pull it off. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of people in East Tennessee go to the one in Crossville. I mean, yeah. if, if there's not one here, we go up there, and they have a great show up there. Uh, they have a couple of shows up there pretty close together at different times of the year. But uh, one in, in, up around Lawrenceburg, up in there, to me, that would be good. Um, it really would, because that's an area that we used to have one in Lawrenceburg, used to have one in Summertown. Used to have one down in Dixon, right. and, and we've lost yeah. those shows. Right. So now's a good time to come back. Now, that time of year, the Dixon, that'd be awful hot down in that. <laughs> but yeah. they had a great show. But I'd love to see several of these older shows. I'd love to see them come back, and that's something we're missing. Well, I, I've enjoyed horses for years when I was just a boy. Went to my first show there in Lawrenceburg, and I was hooked. I mean, I was hooked, and uh, you know, the, the last couple of years since I've been with Lane, the horse business has been good to me. I, I'd like to give back a little something uh, uh, to the trainers and the spectators and the people that uh, uh, like to come to the shows. And uh, you know, we got some people that uh, have volunteered to help. And, uh, so yeah, we're we're. We're going to work on it, and hopefully we'll have some news the next week or two. So well, right there's your salesman. Get him out there. He's find them sponsors. Well, right? that's what I need. <laughs> yeah, we'll work on I, it. I, I need some sponsors to, you know, it, it costs some money to put it on, and uh, and we want to pay the trainers good, and uh, you know, we talked about like to maybe do a 250 or 500 to the trainer that enters the most horses, something like that. There's always anything, anything that create a hook to get them to come, but there's one thing that I point out, and Lane Leverett brought this up, and I never thought about it, but it's true. When them lights go on in a small community, it's kind of like, you know, they draw the bugs draw, to the yeah. lights. Well, them lights draw the fans, and, and and that's a good thing, and that that's something that I'd love to see, because these small shows, they're the backbone. They are. they are the backbone of the walking horse industry. Yeah. Well, St. Joe is kind of like that town. It's a it's a smaller town, uh, and there's a good uh, good community around it. And uh, like you said, when uh, lights come on, people will show up. You know, uh, you, you kind of look at it on like Friday night football. You know, Friday night lights. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, St. Joe is a is a great community. It's a, it's an old German community, one of the earliest settlements in Lawrence County. But with that being said, uh, we're going to try to work on it and see what we, if we can get this dog to hunt and, uh, and go on with it. Go on with. It. Hopefully, we'll next week or two we'll have some good news. Uh, we've already been kind of putting together the framework, some people, uh, contacts. Uh, I, I've been uh, trying to make a list of. My old, some of my old sponsors to contact, and uh, uh, so uh, we've been working on it a little bit, and we, we've still got a little logistics to work out. But uh, like I said, we got a couple of strikes on it, and we ain't out yet. But once you find that track, you'll be home free. That's it. We'll be home free. Yeah, you know, we got the date. We think uh, June the 11th will be good. So uh, we'll just uh, we got a little more ground to, to turn, and uh, we got a little more work to do, but the good Lord's willing, we'll, uh, we'll get her done. All right. Don, what was you going about to say? Uh, Peter, I'm living in Petersburg, and, you know, I asked them over there why they quit having, you know, it's not the biggest or the oldest, but... Yeah, but it was a good one. Yeah, and they said the man passed away. That he did. The man that put that on passed away. 
But I'm going to tell you, it, and this, this happens in a lot of towns, community clubs, civic groups, and civic clubs, they put, put on the majority of our shows, Lions Club, Silver Tan, Rotary, Kiwanis. But now those mem their membership has dropped. And that's what yeah. hurts Gallatin. After 57 years of having a show, they dropped theirs. And that was back in 2015. They got a great track down there. But it, it's run down that you have to, you know, you'd have to fix it back up. But if groups would get together and support it, I'm all for getting more schools. If we get the schools involved, to raise money for the football team, the basketball team, the tennis team, the swim team, and I could go on and on, but Shelbyville Tennis Club, they're gonna have a horse show over at the Ag Center. The Ag Center has been unused, and it used to be used every other Saturday every night, yeah. which I know there's a lot of shows in Shelbyville, but every time you have a show, people come. That's it. And I mean, that's it, in the tennis club, that's a good reason, you know, a good good reason to raise money. Football teams, baseball teams, softball teams. So if we could get the schools involved, the Gallatin School, if they got involved, that track would get fixed up. I've worked for, I had two boys that played football. When it come time to raise money for the football team or the softball team or the baseball, mamas and daddies were out there working. So. And that's the way you get them involved, and that, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to look at getting the right people involved in putting on shows and let them see the profit margin in it, and then we go from there. Absolutely. Well, Bobby, we're going to watch some coats, right? Yeah, let's go watch some coats. Are, are you going to try to sell Don one? Uh, anybody that's got a check with him, I'll try to sell him one. I'll have to go home with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you all for Thank sitting and talking, yeah, and enjoy. we'll be right back with some more horses at Lane Leverage. All right. Good interview. Good people right there. I'm sure you heard all the commotion in the background. That's everybody come over to see some coats. And we're about to go outside and take a gander at some good ones. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. <laughs> Jen DeWin started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jen would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaise Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the Amateur Four-Year-Old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both Amateur and Open Show Pleasure Divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both Open and Amateur Divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen Dwin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once and delivered to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow.
I don't want anybody to forget the winner circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner circle when you're getting your equine needs. Let's get back to Water Horse and watch some more videos. <laughs> As was said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we were at Lane Leverett, and he had a lot of good coats out there. He had some perfect hawks and some others. Of course, he just sold an honors coat to Mr. Joe Barnes, who is always looking for that good one. And from what I've seen, he has purchased him another one for this year. But right now, we're going to go watch some coats at Lane Leverett's along with everybody else who's out there watching. Here we go. This is a perfect halt off spring, and I'm just going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, all of these coats are going to be in different stages. They're just getting ready, they're just getting broke, so there's going to be some bouncing going on, there's going to be some visual that people that know horses, they can see what's coming, they know what's there, but it's just not there yet. So like I say, this is different stages of training for these. Of course, that's Eli on the, in the saddle. Lane has a way of staying on the ground and putting Eli up there. Even at this stage, you can tell that that horse right there has a lot of potential. Here's another perfect talk. Right here is I am Jose. It's strange because we're going to have a video of Jose Jose a little bit later on in the show today that uh, his three year old class, the stud class, and I'm here to tell you, it, he, he is a good one. A lot of people don't realize it, but since 19, uh, since 2019, Jose Jose has sired 834 world or reserve world title horses. He was a sire of 2013, 14, and 15 world grand champion. I am Jose. Anytime you go to Lane Leverage and you get there, you're going to see horses at every level of training. Some of them are ready to go to the show. Some of them are getting ready to go to the show. But I guarantee you, you're going to see them working horses every day. Always watch to see how that back foot hits, how they stretch, see what their stride is, and I want to see how they're reaching up front. 
lot of people don't realize it, but a little change here, a little change there, make a lot of difference on a horse. Another I am Jose. Right here is about to get there now. Here's a three-year-old by I Am Jose. See the way he stretches with that back end? He's got that head set. He is stroking on, reaching, getting on those heels, getting out there. I think we saw a coat in just about every stage, including one ready to go to the show ring. So if you're looking for that coat right now, go to Lane Leverett's. Tell him that I sent you out there. 
He may give you a discount, but I doubt it. All right, we're going to close out the show with some very special video. But before we do that, we're going to take a short pause for our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi-night shows, sibling and progeny searches, Ryder Cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. Let's get back to Jerry and his guests on what a horse. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A few reminders before we go to the special video of Jose Jose. During 2022, the What a Horse show will be free on all segments. The What a Horse TV video group Facebook page, What a Horse Facebook page, my Facebook page, the regular YouTube page, STGN 49 Extreme Sports Network, Charter Spectrum in Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, where they have 2.2 million subscribers. A good thing, the YouTube, the What a Horse TV YouTube, just surpassed 4 million strong in subscribers. That put them number one in the streaming category. They just passed Hulu. So that's another way to watch What a Horse. It's important that our horse get in front of as many people as possible and they see just how great he is. Makes no difference if you're on a trail ride, going to a horse show, flat shot class, or performance. A Tennessee walking horse is the way to go. Also, I want to remind everybody that Saturday at Sugar Creek, used to be Rising Star, starting at 10 o'clock, they will have the first look and a coat preview. Any coat from any stud. All that matters, just call David Williams, 931-639-1081. Say, hey, David, I'm coming. Tell him to get me something to cook to eat. Going to have Rowdy Ranch is going to be there serving food. People will be all over the place. I guarantee you, Saturday, this is the place you want to be, is in Shelbyville, Tennessee, at Sugar Creek, out on Snail Road. Also, I want to remind everybody, there's horse shows coming in April, March. We got things going on everywhere. No matter where you look, it's out there. I do want to remind everybody to go to Sand Creek this weekend. Sand Creek. Go out to Rising Star this weekend and use Sugar Creek Farms for one heck of a coat preview. Now, we're going to watch a video of and close the show out with it, really, of Jose, Jose, who has sired 834 world or reserve world title horses. That's a heck of a feat for one horse. Let's go watch this video. I'll see you next week.
22nd, Oakwood Farms Pleasure Extravaganza Sale will be held at 10 a.m. on Highway 64. Saturday, September 4th, Oakwood Farms 12th Annual Premium Breeders' Choice Broodmare Sale will be at 10 a.m. And next Friday and Saturday, September 34th, the following seven numbers will park in at the south end of the arena on the grass, please. 718, 823, 947, 1103, 1682, 1750, and 2121. Those numbers again, 718, 823, 947, 1103, 1682, 1750, and 2121. All park in on the grass. All others take the track to your left. Showing a flat walk, please.
Lieutenant Parkerman in the south end, please. Shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, please start talking.